All right. So listen, it's Friday morning. We got hockey. We haven't even talked about a Leafs game that happened a couple of nights ago. But how about this? I wanted to start our show. Jesse, I sent you over, over a video. Uh-huh. I want I want to start the show with gentle laughter. Uh-huh. Yeah. It, 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 well, maybe that. Maybe a little bit heartier. Heartier than that. Like, huh? <laughs> how about 50 seconds of William Nylander laughing? Oh. Do you like that idea? I would like that. Right. Who made that? Well, I mean, remember, so they had this video uh, with a grocery company, and uh, and he was laughing throughout it. It's a nice little thing. But they the Leaf supercut William Nylander just laughing in it, and um, I just figured you should see it. Cause <laughs> 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 Wait, <laughs> He's got like a heel heel. He does. It's not as good as Spatz's laugh, but it's infectious, isn't it? <laughs> it's infectious. It is. <laughs> Do we, do we simp our laugh king? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm definitely simping. On God? On God. For real? Yeah, I Good. would, I would let bro cook. <laughs> Absolutely. Maddie laugh. Maddie laugh. That was a yeah. funny video. That is a funny video. The one, no, the one they did at the grocery store, mm-hmm. like with Matthews and Marner and Riley and, and Nylander. That was really some good. fun stuff. I think people knew who they were. Guys. No, <laughs> no. So, so uh, Matthews did a hit on uh, ten fifty with with O Dog and them, and he, they asked him that. They're like, "There's no way people didn't know you were Matthews." Like a couple of people did it. Wow. <laughs> you know, and like oh, that's the funny. woman, the woman he was doing the push ups for. I think she was just a little confused as to what was happening. See, like, <laughs> I, I wish they had done it because Sobeys, I, I think, is the grocery chain. I think they had. I wish they had done it in like uh, somewhere where they wouldn't have been as well known, like Edmonton. Mm-hmm. Like imagine they're eating food because they, you know, they'll, they'll they'll talk to them through the earpiece and be like, okay, eat their apples. Like and Mitch Marner's like eating their apples as they're buying them. Um, and like I wish it, it's manager like, come, what the fuck? <laughs> right in the but it, it'd Watch be funny because it, whether or not you knew them, if you knew they were Leafs, you would hate it even more. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Hey, I didn't even eat anything yet. Yeah, I know. Go Oilers. <laughs> I'm mad about the opening night. Exactly. Um, now, uh, we got uh, a whole bunch to connect on, but, you know, we, the thing we were waiting for, the thing we were hoping for, the mm. thing we were wanting the first night was Connor Bedard to get a goal. He got an assist. Yay! But he did get a goal against the Boston Bruins. Boo. Remember, it's October, so it's got to be spooky. Mm. Um, and uh, it was a nice little wraparound. Yeah! It's, Happy for him. It, th- but th- even that wasn't his welcome to the NHL moment. His welcome to the NHL moment was being held by Brad Marchand and carried into the Bruins bench in front of the ref and having nothing happen. Welcome to the show, kid. Yeah. They don't call those. I think Marchand was chirping him after the game, too, a little bit. Oh, he likes to have fun. Absolutely. He um, likes. He's a scamp. Now, I don't know if you guys saw it. There is a graphic. I just threw it up to Jesse, but uh, uh, we don't have to put this up. But um, it was uh, <laughs> they put up a graphic on the on the feed and they said chasing greatness. And they're like. Career goals: Gretzky, eight ninety four. Bedard, one. One. Yeah. <laughs> that That's really a funny good. graphic. That's good. Only eight hundred ninety three to go. That's Do you right. hear the footsteps, Wayne? Do you? Yeah, TNT was having some fun with it. That's a uh, that's some good TV ink. I like that. They're the they're the yeah. sense of humor that the game needs uh, in terms of broadcasters. They they just they seem to have the most fun with it, and I love that. That was good. That's stuff. hilarious. Yeah. What a great idea. And look at his line mate, Taylor Hall, coming in, being like, congrats, and then getting hurt immediately. Yeah. It's a very Taylor Hall game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. It, it, uh, it was, how long is he out for? Uh, they said week to week, which... Uh, which means you get evaluated once a week. Nope, not this week. I, it's, it's to me, uh, I, like, I hate when Leaf players, for example, get... Um, uh, said to be week to week because like when the f- when the hell are they coming back right. and you can almost guarantee they're not coming back healthy because what does that mean week to week right like how do you know yeah 
I do week to week. What I, does that mean? I mean I know what that Can means. a doctor please explain to me what week to week means? Well, if a doctor said week to week to you, to you if you were at the doctor's, you'd be like, huh? <laughs> what does that mean? When am I going to feel normal? <laughs> I want to feel normal. Uh, so then uh, before we even get into the games, it was announced right before the games, probably to troll the Leafs because it's all about the Leafs. Oh, uh, oh. Buffalo Sabres have locked up Owen Power long term. Mm -hmm. Um, it's $8.35 million. Not a whole lot different from the Jake Sanderson deal. Uh, no, it is not. Uh, I rarely say this. It's such a good deal for the Sabres that I think it's a bad deal for Owen Power. Oh, yeah. It feels that way, doesn't it? Dude, you haven't... You, you know you were the first overall pick, right? Like, you haven't played enough hockey to commit to that. Mm -hmm. He could be good enough by the end of this thing that he could be asking for more, but... I don't know. I guess what 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 do you what do you get offered? Somewhere between sixty five and seventy million dollars. Yeah, I'll take it. Fifty eight point four. Still fifty eight. You know what? You know what? Once you cross that fifty threshold, you kind of have to say yes, don't you? Yeah. Well, no, you don't have to, Adam, because it begs the question: Could Owen Power have taken less? That's true. That's good. You know what? A very good question. What's the cap at eight point? Uh, Why not just date? Eight point three five. That's not enough. Yeah. No. Yeah. The three hundred fifty grand. He needed it. He needed it. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Eight's pretty close to seven. He, he uh, could have just he, gone down he's to seven. Twenty right now. So when this expires, he's going to be twenty-seven. Yes. Right. I find it's interesting. it doesn't kick until next year, so he'll be twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Okay. So for the for Owen Power himself, I don't hate the deal because at the end of it, I'm missing like a year of free agency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's but not too bad in those terms. They only bought one year. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And you know, I wanted to do a numbers comparison here because Jake Sanderson and Owen Power are almost identical. I think Jake Sanderson did Owen Power a huge favor because, uh, uh, maybe. or maybe he did the Sabers. Or they made the sense that the Sabers a huge favor. Literally, career points: thirty-two Sanderson, thirty-nine. Uh, Owen Power, and he had 38 when he signed the contract. Oh, my God. Uh, Those guys make so much money. The ice time last year, San, uh, Sanderson was at 25. Owen Power was at 23.48 on average. Damn. So, like, Damn. pretty darn close, right? And and um, That's going to be such a great deal. That's going to be such... They're going to be a problem. Dude, like, um, the way we talked about um, Hedman uh, McDonough Sergachev on yep. Tampa... We're going to be talking about Darlene, Power, and Insert here. <laughs> like, it really doesn't matter who Cage they... Cage Thompson? Uh, just, no, like, I mean, I mean on the D. Oh, on the yeah. D, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, screw it. Put Tage on D. <laughs> he's Haru? got the bomb. He can shoot from there. <laughs> you like Yoki Haru? Uh, yeah, but, like, li li listen to the trio I named. I don't know. It sounds like he could be McDonough Light. Yeah. I, well, we'll see. Yeah, the only time will Doubt tell. Doubt it. <laughs> time will tell, Steve Dangle. Now, no. I will say this. Uh, the Rangers crushed the Sabres last night. Yep. Crushed them. Um, that was going around on uh, the opening couple days. I, I love the Associated uh, Associated Press breakdown of this. Oh, yeah? Because this is really the battle of New York State, right? Or one of the battles of that's New York That's how State. they view it. Um, <laughs> that's how I want to view it. Mm. There's four teams in New York State, but I want this to be the battle. Mm. Um, nah, New Jersey is in Jersey. Uh, oh, yeah. Is Jersey not... Oh, is Jersey its own state? Yeah. Yes, Adam, it's its own <laughs> place. <laughs> oh, you're the right. New Jersey State Lottery. <laughs> the place where <laughs> anything can happen. <laughs> There's no way I should be teaching you right. about geography. You're right. You're right. I should know better. Um, <laughs> and anyway, why are we talking about this game? We're not talking about Jack Hughes and his two-goal performance for the Devils. Brought to you by the New Jersey State Lottery. Remember... Anything can happen in Jersey. <laughs> um, so, Chris, so what I love about the Associated Press breakdown of this game, uh, just as a write-up, is sometimes I pull links and stuff like that so I can grab little pieces here and there. And it's the first The first set, uh, first sentence begins with Chris Kreider scored uh, power play and shorthanded goals. And then, it, and, then the, and then the next paragraph, the Rangers won and Peter Laviolette's debut as coach. And then the next paragraph is Artemi Panarin had a goal and an assist. And then the next paragraph was Shosturkin uh, appearing in his 159th game. And then the last paragraph was his just a sentence. Uh, J.J. Paterka scored for Buffalo. Is that AI? I don't know, but that is the, it's AP. Uh, and literally, Rangers, 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 uh, Buffalo. <laughs> sounds like, sounds like a computer <laughs> No, I mean, I didn't read the whole if article it, to you. It's a human. Yeah. 
Um, Isn't that hilarious? They, so it's like, they yeah, Buffalo didn't mention, uh, yeah. they didn't mention laugh scoring. Like he opened the uh, he opened the. Oh story. no, they did mention it. I no, didn't read did. the whole article, like oh, I said, sure. but laugh is he, mentioned. He read most of it. Um, <laughs> the vast uh, majority. Of the I article. just I just thought it was like such a man. Someone put a hit job on the Buffalo Sabers for that one, and JJ Pertucker scored. It they didn't have perfect. a good game. It was a disappointing start to the year for them. I yeah. I felt for Devin Levi after that first period because I thought they Me were too. still in it. Yeah. You know, like I saw you know his teammates were like giving him it's okay, it'll be fine. It was not fine. I felt bad for him because I had him in fantasy. But I also had Philip Gustafson in fantasy. So I had one of the worst opening nights and one of the best <laughs> opening nights. So um, that's cool. I like uh, I like this part of the year because it's overreaction season. You know, mm. none of these things matter. Sabres. There was, there was well, another blowout that uh, we will talk about. But I think we need to start with uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs truly getting into it. Uh, controversy right away. Mm. Um, what was that? The Leafs have a new goal song. Oh, oh my God. And there's a bunch of haters. Now, I couldn't believe how many people in the timeline are like, Kid Cudi sucks. I wasn't aware that people didn't like Kid Cudi's music. I wasn't aware the song was by Kid Cudi. It's the Steve Aoki remix. Like, can't you just listen to something and go, wee? Like, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? What's, what, okay, tell you what. Here, let's all sit down. Mm -hmm. All right, class. Justin is going to tell us what the new goal song is. Go on, Justin. What is it? Like, do we all get turns? Should we all submit a playlist that the Leafs play after each goal? That's what the Sabres are doing. And Whoever if, scores gets their own. No, no, that, that, no, 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 that's no. the players. What about the people? And they oh, don't the matter. The t- no. Twitter people. Uh, it's just, yes. I, I am sick of it. I'm sick of it. Because people were like, change the song. Change the song. And I was like, I don't care for it that much but i'm also not passionate about it and they said change the gosh darn song and the leaf said all right we're changing the song and then they changed the song and we're still not happy yeah they won knock it off well they hadn't won yet well they won and also people are like i can't hear it on my tv i'm like well they're adjusting the volumes guys it's the then first go one. to the game <laughs> you can't hear it on your tv i got a great idea ticket master go to the game Seat geek, go to the game. It's so the far. Shady from, guy outside the building, go to the game. It's so far from like an important issue. No. Now that, now that they've changed it and they've committed to, do you have the full uh, tweet where they've committed to doing different uh, goal songs for, a, for I will next pull generation it up. games? Yeah. For original six matchups, there are going to be different goal songs, and it's just going to be a hype song that plays after they score. Like we won, you guys. I yeah, just, we pre- <laughs> we won, and we're like, no, we didn't. We lost. <laughs> I don't. And also, I just was like, I, I was personally offended by all the Kid Cudi hate. I, well, and like, I saw stuff about the lyrics. I'm like, the lyrics. I thought the lyrics were. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows the I freaking didn't know lyrics. There were that. words. <laughs> I also don't care that they're on. Yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to dance and go yay after they score. Yay! I can't find it, Jesse. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll bring. It. I get okay. riled up about a lot. And when I can't get riled up about something, it means you need to I, chill. I was riled about Hall and Oates. And I told you that on the show. Okay. Is, there's a lot of PTSD with that, okay? Uh, I understand what you're saying. I mean... It is, I associate Hall and Oates with, with the last era. And this is a, this is a new era, yeah. right? It is. We have a new general manager. Um, there are a lot of new players. This is a new era of the Leafs. It was around for too long. It was. And it was. Now, if that's had, why I hated it the most. If they had been winning, because what makes a good goal song, right? Winning! Winning makes Wee! a good goal, goal song. People are like, it's just not a good goal song. What makes a good goal song? Is all the small things inherently a good goal song? Not really. What was but the, the Avs won the fucking cup. Is Gloria a great goal song? I don't no, know. but the Blues won the cup. Well, how about Chelsea Dagger? What, what was the Blackhawks goal song in 2006? Who gives a shit? Da, 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 da. Because they won three cups yep. in then, five years. And I, the Leafs, I think the original one that they used to have, Zombie Nation, that was a good goal song. Yeah, and then every team took it. Yeah. Including, like the Bruins took it. Yeah. You didn't have the same goal song on two teams in the same division. The, well, and the, the thing is, the Leafs don't put up enough of a fight. The Lightning took their jersey. The uh, <laughs> the the Bruins took their goal song like fight someone. Yeah, but now they got Ryan Reeves. That's right. Now, so Jesse, it's all it's over now. What do we have, Jess? Uh, this was from Lance Hornby of the Toronto Sun, who first reported the change in the goal song. Hall and Oates are out. Leafs confirmed they will change goal song to Dreams. 
uh, Goal Song Dreams to yeah. to a selection of three or four tunes based on original six games, Next Generation, Throwback Thursdays, and Regular Season Standard to be unveiled tonight. So that Kikati song is one of many that's going to play after a goal. And now that we've won, just be happy when they score and cheer for no. whatever song's playing. No, Jesse, I won't. You know, you know. Also, that's not the name of that song, by the way. He cut that down for "Dreams" is a Fleetwood Mac song. Yeah, you make my dreams come true yeah. is the real song. Lance, he did, he did the uh, like the newspaper writer thing. Yeah, yeah, well, "Dreams" is a big fucking song, man. You can't just call a song "Dreams." But he, he called Stevie them, Nicks put some respect on that name. He called them tunes, which I appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> tunes, tunes is a is your, is definitely a dad's thing. Which I he love. Said, so the Leafs are going to be putting in a quarter into the jukebox yeah. and playing songs after the game. Yeah, we're, like we're going to put it on shuffle and see yeah. which 45 it comes up with. You know what's going to piss people off is when uh, like throwback Thursdays and someone scores and then it's like, what's your fantasy by Ludacris? That's not throwback! I'm not old! <laughs> ah! Yes, you are. Yeah. Yes, You're you old. are. I got bad news. You are old. That's the song Super is... Bowl thing. Yep. The Snoop Dogg and Dr. J playing the Super Bowl. Those are the old guys. Yeah. yeah. It's I, the same thing as when the Rolling Stones and Prince were playing it when we were growing up. Yep. It's still one of my favorite phenomenons is all the Gen Zers going, oh, this Missy Elliott's about to go off. She's about to blow up. Oh, you don't yeah. remember that? Or, 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 what, or the what was the, was it the Grammys or was it Super Bowl where... Uh, people were like, who's this Paul McCartney guy? <laughs> I know. Uh, with uh, Rihanna. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. When yeah. they did. Uh, four or five seconds. Four or five seconds. Well, both. Oh, well, good. Four Look at five. us both being right. Yeah, there you go. Hello. Yeah, Hope that is it. That, now, that's a song would be a bad goal song. Yeah. That would be a bad goal song. I don't think it would, would be a celebration <laughs> no. song after this. No. Unfaithful by Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be a murderer. That, that's what it would be, right? We could do stay. Just stay. Running through Rihanna's song. I want you to stay. Um, Every by, time Willie scores. By the way, I was at a um, total random thing, but the guy that Rihanna did stay with, his name's Mickey Echo, and I was at a concert in London at the iTunes Festival covering it for Kiss 92. Oh, back I, I was there too. And Mickey England, Echo, not Ontario. Not, yeah, yeah, England. And, mm. um, and Mickey Echo came out. And that song was massive at that point. So he came out and he like opened with it. And everybody was like, oh my God. And then everybody was like, I wonder what other songs he has. And the next five songs were exactly the same pace Aww. and exactly the same sadness. And by the end of it, people were really fucking depressed. But the next act, some up and comer no one had ever heard of, Iggy Azalea. Oh, cool. Yeah. No, she was actually good. Nice. Oh, good. yeah? She was good. This is pre-fancy. <laughs> this is this is pre-making uh, up words. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's still the best buying. I wish that. I could be famous by going up there and spitting into the microphone like Animal from the Muppets. You <laughs> that's sort of what you do sometimes. It is. You know what? <laughs> Iggy, you know what? My dog is named after you, and uh, I just wanted to let you know that. Um, all right. Not anyone else. So Leafs game. Mm. Very exciting. Mm. Um, we'll start with this. Matthews gets his 300th goal. Hooray. He is the 10th fastest player to do it all time. Uh, he is wow. the only this. Uh, uh, there's only two guys in the NHL today who have done it that yep. fast. Him and Ovi. Him and Ovi, yep. um, which is pretty spectacular. And I believe he, it moves him ahead of one goal ahead of Rick Vive for number five or number six on the Leafs all time list. Did you see the list of the guys ahead of him? I don't have it in front of me, but it's here just, I can look it up. It's 80s, 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 90s, 80s, 80s, Ovechkin. <laughs> like, oh, oh, you mean in terms of, I thought you meant Toronto Maple Leafs. No, no, no. In terms of uh, the yeah. fastest guys to uh, yeah. 300. Currently, Matthews is on the same pace. He's on a very similar, if not, I think he squeaks him out a little bit more. Uh, same pace as Ovechkin in terms of all-time goal scoring. And Ovechkin's about to pass Wayne Gretzky for the all-time goal scoring. So, lead. Hold so, on. So Matthews is ahead of Ovi's pace? Yeah, they're, no. on, they're on a very similar pace. Yeah, they, it, he's not far behind. He's not far behind. But the thing is, Ovechkin was able to score 40 goals until he's 40 yeah. every single season. Yeah. And if Matthews is able to do that, then he'll pass Gretzky. But that's the, that's the part of the career wow. yeah. we don't think he can maintain. There, there's going to be an, an interesting uh, even out that's going to happen there because the beginning of Ovi's career, scoring... NHL wide was ridiculous and then it slowed way down but he didn't Matthews it went down every year um until like two years ago mm -hmm. it started to finally go back up after years and years of it going down 
So uh, if if I mean if he can keep pace with Ovi, I mean it's pretty sick. Maybe they'll win a cup by year thirteen. Total random stat. We look at these every once in a while, but uh, 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 Quant Hockey has a great breakdown of all the top teams lists or whatever. So Matthews is fifth, guys. It's very likely this season if he scores forty goals, he will be almost well, he'll be ten goals up on Ron Ellis. Mm-hmm. So he'll be just outside of. The top three all time in goals for the uh, goals in a Leafs jersey. Ron Ellis did it in a thousand thirty four games. Matthews could do it in wow. in just over five hundred. Sundin, I believe, has the franchise record with four twenty. Yes, and nice. M- Matthews could four twenty blaze it. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's the weed. Yeah, weed. <laughs> Let's Steve, get high. I got your. Uh, I, got I was gonna Matt Sundin. Yeah. Well, like here. Sorry, r- real quick before yeah. that. 420, he could like conservatively pass Matt Sundin. He could have like three disappointing seasons and pass him. Well, I'm thinking <laughs> that here, here's what I'm thinking. If he scores, let's say, okay, so if we if we average out his last two seasons, mm-hmm. he had 60 goals two years ago. He had 40 last year, which was an off year. Yeah. I, I love that sports, so even Sportsnet this morning was like, well, maybe Matthews is in for a bounce back. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's, he's, yeah. It's true though. So it's high. true. Yeah. Even Willie kept pace. That's not good enough for Matthews. Yeah. If so you're gonna be making 13 and a quarter. You gotta yeah. be so, closer to 60. So let's say it's 50. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that fair? Yeah. Like you know, just in between. Very good. 50 goals puts him about 10 behind Dave Keon. Okay. If he scores another 50 the following year, again we're going by averages here. Mm-hmm. He is 20. Or he's 18 behind Matt Sundy. That's pretty cool. And he's and smoke the record. And and I I also think it's neat that um, of all the players on this list, um, Matt Sundin 748 penalty minutes as a Leaf. Mm-hmm. Daryl Sittler second in scoring 763 penalty minutes as a Leaf. Number three, Dave Keon, 75 penalty minutes in 1,062 games. Wow. Uh, and then Ron Ellis. That is not where I thought that was going. 1,034 games as a Leaf, 207 penalty minutes, still good. How many penalty minutes in 482 games does Austin Matthews have, Jesse and Steve? Something like it's 60. Okay. Yeah, it's not going to be a lot. What do you think? This is 80. 94. There you go. Oh, not bad. More than I thought. Still good. Yeah, it's still pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought that was kind of a neat stat. I don't know. Um, Steve, these were the names you were mentioning earlier about the fewest games to 300 career NHL goals. Mm-hmm. On the list is Wayne Gretzky, 80s. Lemieux, 80s. Brett Hall, 80s. Mike Bossy, 80s. Yari Curry, 80s. Timmy Solani, Freak, Ovi, Ovi, Pavel Bure, 90s, early Freak. 90s, Maurice Richard. Uh, like World War II, and then Austin Matthews. Yeah, yeah, I also I also want to throw out there that Brett Hall is early nineties. His his you know he was still on the on the Flames in the eighties. He wasn't traded till like eighty nine. So no, yeah, look him up. He won a cup with the Flames. No, no, he didn't win a cup because he wasn't on the team. They didn't. The coach didn't like him or something like that. It's like a bizarro his, twist. His ridiculous seasons where he was scoring like seventy and eighty. Oh, he did win. Yeah, sorry. I guess he did win in eighty seven, <laughs> eighty eight. Right. Oh well, there you go. He was traded at. Actually, he was traded right before they won the cup. Oh, oh, that sucks. Um, yeah, he was like really, really early 90s before scoring tanked. Yeah, and then he, so 88, 89, 41, 89, 90, 72, 90, 91, 86, yeah. uh, 91, 92, 70, and then he fell off a little bit and had a 54 and a 57 goal year. Mm-hmm. Red Hall, early 90s. Bum. So Austin's uh, nine games off of Alexander Ovechkin's pace in terms of career goals. Oh. Truly stupid and goofy. Yeah. And Obi has the all-time record, so we'll see if Austin can maintain it. And if it, it really comes down to health. He does look healthy. It would just be great this year if the Leafs don't play Jamie Benn and the Dallas Stars and he doesn't get a cross-check to the middle of the back exactly mm-hmm. where he heard it before. No, you, you thought Matthews looked healthy? No, I thought he scored a hat-trick despite playing a bad game. Oh, that... Oh, Steve Simmons? <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to bring that up? Do we want to throw that uh, that clip oh, up? There? Just the clip made me laugh so hard. Um, he he kind of laughed at it too, right? <laughs> he didn't know what, what do you say to that. So okay, well, like yeah. So okay, so let me let me let me yeah, let's take this back to the beginning. I know most hockey fans that listen to this probably have some idea of who Steve Simmons <laughs> is, but if you were to contextualize Steve Simmons for people that are new, uh, and maybe aren't even Toronto, you know, Toronto fans or are aware of the media situation here, give it to us. He is a columnist who is, uh, I will say, ballsy enough to say things that others don't, but often it is quite inflammatory. 
And him and Matthews have a strained relationship, I think, highlighted by Simmons was the guy who broke that he had COVID during the first wave. Um, or I think it was the first wave. It was, it was right before one of the seasons. Right. Well, he what he did, forget that it was COVID because you, you say COVID and people lose their minds. But uh, um, it was that he revealed personal, private health information yes. about a player without their consent. Yes. That was the problem. And Matthews called him out on it. Yeah. And then there's a whole conversation uh, about journalistic integrity. And then it's a, it's a mess. But you could understand why Matthews, at the very least, would not like this guy. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know that Matthews doesn't necessarily. I, I, I feel like from this clip, Matthews just, just like, oh, my God. Like, okay. So here we go. Like, he doesn't care. Like, you know how Dave Festchuk got under Phil Kessel's skin? Yeah. I don't feel like that with this. Surprised the building was as dead as it was to, to open going in the first period. I didn't think it was very dead at all, honestly. I thought it was going pretty good. Last time, odd to score three and maybe not even have you know, one of your top kind of games. I don't know, Steve. I mean, I don't know, man. Uh, did you feel you were playing real well before uh, coming? Or? No, not really. Honestly, I thought we could, you know, it was a little bit sloppy on our end from, you know, maybe the first period and a half. And I thought we started to kind of get some shifts together and uh, start rolling a little bit. But, um, you know, I think that's the beauty of the game, that it just takes kind of one opportunity to kind of swing the momentum. And that's what we did. So he asked so, two questions there. One was about the dead arena. Yeah. Yeah. And then one was about, he basically says, and I don't know if you could hear it, mm -hmm. um, you know, are you surprised that you scored three goals despite not having a great game? Now, when he says you, the one thing I want to I wanna say is I don't think he means Austin. I think he means the Leafs team. I think you're right. I think he to meant be, the... And he's he right. He doesn't deserve the benefit of the doubt, frankly. But <laughs> yeah. I'm going to give it to him. And he does okay. not deserve it. Well, and totally. I think Matthews had the exact same thought process. He took it as, well, I scored a fucking hat trick. What do you want? <laughs> and then he went, oh, maybe he's talking mm -hmm. about the us. Team. And he you went into. In well, even yeah. even maybe Matthews didn't want to give him the benefit of the doubt there, right? It's like, because you instantly go to that, right? But like that face, that facial reaction says, I, I scored a hat trick. Yeah. I tied the game twice. <laughs> what do you mean? I didn't yeah. have the best game. Of course I fucking did. But I, I. I do genuinely think he meant the team. Yeah. And like, he's right. Like beginning of the season, whew, man, the first dozen games or so last year, maybe less than a dozen, um, the passing on this team was so bad. It took yeah. a while to get that under wraps. Holy shit. It was just pond hockey. When Jake Evans scored, can I just say this? Mm. Uh, the last real memory I have of Jake Evans playing hockey is the Shifley hit. Oh, and, shit. And, and I know that he's played hockey since then. I know he's had some injuries and stuff. But I was just like, it's, it's nice that he's played. I was, like, I, was like not, I was unbothered by Jake Evans scoring. Good for him. Yeah, yeah for no, sure. Good, good um, for him. I get that. Uh, new hook scoring was big for the Habs, too, uh, at the beginning of the second period, which kind of was. Well, he, the first one, though, I think is like monkey off his back. He didn't, he didn't perform to the level perhaps he thought he could in Chicago or in Chicago, Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, that. Slavkovsky, Doc, and Newhook line looked really good. Mm -hmm. That was Slavkovsky's like best game of his career. Yeah, like <laughs> two he was good. Two was first great. overall picks didn't have a great preseason. He didn't have a great one, and Lafreniere didn't have a great one, and they both score opening night. Go yeah. figure. And then the Leafs opens the scoring with Noah Gregor. Yeah, mm -hmm. as as we all predicted, guy who you definitely knew existed last year. Fucking <laughs> off the bar. <laughs> I knew he existed. I know you did. I knew he existed. I'm saying if most people are taking their, their truth potion, how much attention were you paying to Noah Gregor no. last year? No, not very much. We cared more about Pontus Holmberg than Noah Gregor. Hell yeah. Oh, you know? shit. <laughs> Let's talk about that for yeah. five minutes minimum. You, you could. I could. Still a great, strong... Did you know he would play off MVP in Sweden? Pontus. It, it's, it's so good. Yeah, it's a great I need name. him to be a star. Um, assisted by John Klingberg. Who I thought had a dandy game. Jesse, did you think John Klingberg had a dandy game? I don't think anybody on the defense had a good game. That's fair. I, I, I think, I don't know if you have this in fair. there, but the TJ Brody thing falling down, the Lilligren falling down, like it's, it, I get the ice is bad, but everybody's playing on the same ice surface, so things are equal. Mm -hmm. So you guys got to clean up some stuff. TJ picked up right where he left off in the playoffs. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was, I don't bad. think uh, exiting the zone was their forte. 
um, on <laughs> Wednesday night. Like no. it was, it wasn't clean exits. That uh, third pair is a from, disaster from <laughs> from the Leafs, oh. and yeah, especially the third pair. So I think there's a lot to clean up on the defensive front, but. As we saw across the league, game ones are sloppy. Sloppy. There was so much slop going on on Wednesday night. It was bad. So, like, you know, it's it, if it's sloppy hockey, it's difficult to defend, but it's also difficult to create. Yeah. And uh, there were few players on the ice that were better at creating in that first game than John Klingberg, honestly. Yeah. It's uh, so that was it was nice to see. Matthews gets his first uh, about uh, three quarters of the way through the second period, um, which was a great goal. Uh, that was the 300th goal. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, and this is, I wanted to pay particular attention to this one because I thought of Jesse instantly. Mm. Uh, William Nylander from essentially the point. Oh, yeah. What a great shot. Bang. Ripped it. And then the little wink. Like that dude's an icon. <laughs> yeah. 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 How do you not love William Nylander? He's, first of all, he might have been the best looking player on the ice, yes. uh, both physically and talent wise. He's out uh, to get that 10 mil. Oh man, he's he's one of the like he's got some of the fastest feet in the league. Like when he goes into especially when he's um uh cheating to his uh when his hips are to the right and he's got those you crossovers paying attention going. To his hips, huh? Oh, I was, well, why wouldn't I, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, I don't know if anyone's faster um nope. going, going that way than than Willie. Um and with Klingberg's right-handed shot uh, feeding it right over there. If if he's got his one timer figured out, yeah, that's gonna be a yeah. problem. And at five on five, he was um he was moving around the ice, which is something we don't see often from Willie. And I thought that was something to pay particular attention to. That this season he looks to be in more places. And if you see if you saw him come up down the middle, even when Tavares was on the ice. Uh, William Nylander was handling the rush up the center of the ice, which is fantastic. And I think that's a lot of because they tried him out centerman uh, during the preseason. So he gets some practice at that. And he was driving play. That mm -hmm. line's going to confuse people. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's going to be a fun one for Sheldon Keefe and his staff. Because, I mean, eventually you get figured out. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how he deploys that to keep teams guessing. Yeah, I like, like, we have our line combinations that they start the game with. But the real way to understand how the lines actually work is to look at the shift charts and where they yes. actually play together on the ice. Yeah, Minton, third line center. Eh. Eh. How many minutes to get? You know, yeah. where did he play? That sort of stuff. Yeah, like, uh, and the Ryan Reeves conversation. I want him on the ice in the first period. I want him on the ice in the second period. And then the game's tied in the third. All right, yeah, get Yarn Croak out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, he played two minutes. Now, <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, okay. Chart said he wasn't out there. So, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I thought the Yarn Croak penalty was a bit sloppy on his part. I'm trying to remember that. It was one. like, remember he went into the corner and grabbed around the. Oh. Like every, and, yeah. and the ref's right there. Every time you put an arm around somebody, it's getting called. There's a million penalties the first month. Yeah. There always is. Uh, uh, listen, it's overreaction season. I don't care. Yeah, I'm no, gonna, you're right. Let me overreact, okay? Good. Oh, I'm sorry. We do a show where we underreact to everything. Yeah, well, you know, I thought yeah. both teams played hard. That's what everybody accuses us of being too understated on the Steve Dangle podcast. I think. What? Um, no, they don't. Uh, now, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> now, <laughs> Toronto goes into uh, uh, into the um, uh, second intermission in the lead, um, and then Montreal scores three unanswered uh, in the third, and cool. things get uncomfortable. Now. It's not the three goals I want to talk about. Newhook with his second, mm -hmm. as you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Cole Caulfield thought he had a second one. Mm -hmm. You thought. You thought. But you didn't. Now that, uh, Sean Monaghan was barely offside. I was blown away that the Leafs caught that. Man. Because the replay surely 10, didn't look like that. 10 for 10. Best replay review staff in the entire league uh, on the tournament. 10 for 10? They're, and, they ha they're undefeated in replays. And how big of a swing is that? Do they win the game if they're down 3 nothing? No. No. God, no. Probably not. <laughs> no. Probably not. Like, that was a, a massive... It went from 2-0 to 3-0 to 2-0 to 2-1 to 2-2 two, two, to 3-2. Two, two, to two. And then, of course, the Leafs fucked it. But <laughs> that was a huge momentum swing in that game. Mm -hmm. huge. And I uh, there was a lot of pushback about, oh, I hate offside reviews. He was offside. They got the call right. Yeah. And, like, listen, I know that's not why the rule was invented, but we're past that. Like you, it's it's been around for a long enough time that like you know the deal. It's a part of the game that we're not going back like 10 years. It's yeah. it's around here and they put it in for the egregious calls, but if you're going to do the egregious ones, you got to do also the minute ones and well, that's how it is. Might I, I humbly play. suggest don't go offside. That's it is. <laughs> <what> it is. <laughs> play by the rules, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, like I'm sure they didn't mean to. It was close. Ah. Mm -hmm. Um I was thinking though 
Is there not a better way to have some sort of ref down the line uh, where he flags it? Like, I know the ref is there calling offsides, you know, it's offsides. But is there not an extra ref you'd want on that line? I think they'd rather, like, listen, they're actually, like, freakishly good at catching these things. Like, for all the grief that we give, of uh, you know, officials and linesmen, they're really good at it. And I think they'd rather let the play go and deal with it after mm -hmm. than blowing the play dead and have it be onside. Because that'll get way more annoying. Right, if, right. If we start calling close plays that are actually onside, offside. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about like the pie in the sky kind of ref that hangs out above, looks at everything. But like, uh, yeah, I guess you don't want him blowing it. You want him so them hard. reacting after like when something happens, plays dead instead of just making a call. I was freaking out when I saw they were challenging because the first replay they showed on Sportsnet focused on the wrong player. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what a stupid challenge! They just wasted it. So they went from down three nothing to down three nothing and killing a penalty. Um, and then they, you know, a few seconds later, they're, they're like, oh, it's actually this guy. I mean, yeah, no, if, I, I understand why it's annoying, but it is what it is. I, I also um, think that there's a solution for this, which is just put a fucking chip in the puck and we'll know. Uh, because, well, what are you putting a chip in the player's feet also? No, I think you put it in the puck. And then you know at exactly what time the puck crosses the blue line. So you can use oh, time to do it. Right. Oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting thought. Because if you can't see it, because it was a really, I mean, maybe the NHL has angles that we're not allowed to see. They, they keep do. claiming they do. Yeah. I don't know why we're not allowed to see them. And it's because probably they don't want to be called on their bullshit. But uh, <laughs> yeah, like, obviously, know. what would be the other reason not to have it? Yeah, if, honestly, it's uh, a plausible deniability. 100%. If I say, oh, I made this, but I can't show you why I made this call, then I'm right. Yeah, it's like, remember you were in grade one and you were all competing to get the right answer. And then it's like somebody somebody puts up their hand, they got it. And you're like, I would have said that too. <laughs> it's just a little bit of that. So Why didn't I get the sticker? Exactly. I want the sticker. So my thing is just put a, put a chip in the puck and then you can look at the time and you know. It's easy. I feel like we talked about the chip in the puck uh, probably last oh, episode. A while, yeah, probably last episode. There also is a chip in the puck, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, that's how they get all the stats. Oh, yeah. It's just they don't. You they don't. Ha it's not, <laughs> the <laughs> chip, the, literally, if you cut open a NHL hockey puck right now, there's a whole bunch of technology in it, and they they often do uh, cut it open. They'll take out some stuff and they'll put some stuff back in. And the pucks are manufactured with a whole bunch of technology. I in will the puck. ruin a puck for this experiment. Yeah. No, I'll pull up a YouTube video. Um, but they don't use it for um, like the tennis purpose, where they're 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 shot scoping where the the puck is in terms of like the lot the goal line all that. They use it for like the velocity and the speed. That's how we get all those extra stats. There's a there's a chip in the puck and there's a chip in the back of everybody's jersey that they that they have in there. Mm. Uh, I actually got a really cool glimpse of how they do that on TV. So I don't know if they have access to all those stats in real time. But they're able to measure how fast a player is going, like just with math, mm. basically. He got from here to here in a certain amount of time. We know that the rink is this big, so he covered this much space that's this distance, and X plus Y equals algebra or whatever, and that's how they figure it out. Yep, that's how they should. Uh, but it killed the vibe for the Montreal Canadiens. That, that overturn goal, I think, was the game. Uh, and it wasn't because Montreal wasn't in it the entire way they were. Yeah, um, they got a two goal lead out. hundred percent. And thank you to Austin Matthews for coming back and scoring and tying it and scoring and tying again. In the just worst game of his life. Last thing, I just pulled up a picture of the pucks. Uh, so Matt, if you want to throw this on the screen, those little those are little sensors on the pucks. Those are official NHL game pucks, and those are little sensors that have data track. Why is Gary's signature on it? <sighs> no, it's that's how uh, sports works, you know. Why? But uh, what if it wasn't? Yeah, there's, there's been what if, sensors on the puck for years, and there's sensors on the jerseys, and they're collecting that. I have a question. If the NHL is all about the crest and not the star, why is his signature bigger than the NHL logo? It's on the nameplate. We need a number. Is Eight. Gary Bettman the NHL, or is the NHL the NHL? That's Gary we're Bettman focusing is on. I just, no, I'm just throwing cool, it out there. Cool number technology. is eight <laughs> for the amount of millions he makes every year. <laughs> Isn't that how it works in all of the professional sports? They're like Bud Seeley or Bud Seeley. Rob Manfred's uh, name is signatured on a baseball. Yeah, maybe is it is. Um, yeah, like when you catch a baseball, the commissioner's thing is on there. Um, I don't know. Is is uh, David Stern's David Stern? Um, Adam, <laughs> stop Adam doing Stern. that. Why, why do I <laughs> is Larry O'Brien on the basketball? <laughs> <laughs> is Adam Silver's signature on a basketball? I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, maybe. 
Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. And, uh, I always on thought the it was Shaquille O'Neal's hand on the basketball. <laughs> like the ones we had growing up where yeah, most of the basketball. The balls that they gave away at, was that McDonald's or KFC? I don't know, yeah, but I, I remember balls. having like three of them. I remember they were bad. My neighbor had one. Yeah. Yeah, oh, they know. they popped. No, if there was even like a little pebble on the ground, poof, gone. <laughs> Bye-bye basketball. Anyways, I want to talk about the chip technology no. and not the signatures. You know what I'd have run with? Hey, we, we use this chip to track stats that we don't post on NHL.com. Oh, and we could solve this really hard problem quite easily, but let's not. See, I think you guys, I think you might be wrong. I think that's a prototype because they sell, what are you talking they about? sell <laughs> goal pucks. They sell goal pucks at the store and they don't have friggin' like, well, why would they sell one them? with, why would, oh, you mean you're talking about, like they sell actual pucks that were, um, they scored goals. Okay, so here's a question then. Okay. And, and maybe this is, I don't know if this is true or not. Okay. The idea that an NHL puck uh, would be, like I know people catch pucks and stuff like that, although a lot rarer now because of yeah. the, the netting. I've caught a puck back in the day before there were chips. Uh, it was very cool. But the, for instance, in Formula One, if you're super rich, you can buy a Formula One used car. Uh, but they will Holy never shit. sell it to you with the engine in it because that's proprietary technology. So they give you the shell, but they won't give you the engine. And yeah. you, if you actually want to drive it, have to put your own engine in it and find your own unit and all do that. You stuff. To, do you want to read? So it? I'm wondering. What are they giving me a fraudulent puck? Are they let pulling me... the pucks out? Are they pulling the technology out of the pucks? That's what I'm wondering. Let me read you the story on how NHL sensor embedded puck allows for better broadcast stats and graphics, new types of wagers, and more. Gliding the NHL ice, gliding into the NHL ice this season, re-engineered puck from SMT, the league's puck and player tracking partner. Last year was the first full season NHL, first full NHL season played with SMT sensor embedded puck. But LEDs that were in the puck center are now closer to its top and bottom layers. The purpose is to broaden distribution of intra light, blah, blah, blah. Light from the puck gets beamed through six tiny tubes or light pipes described by SMT CEO and founder Jared J. Hall. The optical tracking system leverages anywhere from 16 to 28 cameras hung in the rafters of each arenas. So there's LEDs, these little chips on the puck that are tracked by 16 to 28 cameras in the arena, and they're doing truck puck tracking technology, Steve. Uh -huh. I'm reading the information to you. I wasn't listening. No. <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to argue? No, no. Okay. I'm just saying. That this thing that they're talking about doesn't exist? Maybe maybe the goal pucks I saw were, because you said the first season they used it was last year? Uh, they they changed some of the, the sensor. They changed it to this uh, in 2022, yeah. Oh, okay. So maybe the pucks I saw were older than that. Because they were game-used pucks. Certified game-used pucks that were used to score a goal in an NHL game, and they didn't have all that shit. I will find a puck and cut it open, Jesse. If it is the last thing I where do. Where do you buy these game-used pucks or these goals? Real sports. sports. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go check. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm going, down, I'm going down tomorrow. Have I told you? Yes, you have. I'm going to be in the MasterCard lounge. Mm, are you going to spit on the pores from your box? Absolutely. Oh, very good. Yeah, I, I could smell them from here. What if, what if they simply remove the six little dots from the pucks before they That's sell them? That's what I'm public? wondering. Why don't? Why wouldn't they just? Because they would probably no. not want to sell the technology in store. And they could probably just put it on a different puck. I'm gonna, I'm gonna f fucking get to the bottom of this. I swear to God, <laughs> it's gonna be my new hobby. But I'm gonna fossil what? hunt for microchips in pucks. Bottom, bottom of what? The uh, puck, apparently. I'm gonna go to what the actual what plant. Are you trying I'm to gonna go to Slovenia, no, no, no. where they make these things. You have not answered to me what you're trying to solve, because we it's know. The pucks that they use on the ice have these six little docks that, that are tracked by cameras in the arena. That's what the media no. says, Jesse. You can't trust yeah. them. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess you'll just believe anything you read yeah. then, Why Jesse? Why'd you do your research, Jesse? Yeah. I thought. I did my own. <laughs> I, I, yeah, sure. You're about to do your own. Dude, you got <laughs> yours, but I've done my own. Are you and Aaron Rodgers going to go get uh, Robert F. Kennedy? And yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to have and the same Fauci. stupid <laughs> smug look on my face for every stupid fucking thing I say. And it's just going to be truth. Stop it. <laughs> Call Travis Kelsey. I hate his face. No. Stupid. Call Man. Travis Kelsey. Get him to a room. And yeah. you guys talk about the chip technology. That guy's handsome as fuck, eh? Aaron Rodgers or no, Travis, Travis Kelsey? No, Travis Kelsey. Nah, he's, I, don't, I liked him pre must I like beard more than must Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. No, yeah, they're having a that. renaissance. No, be, I, on on Travis Kelsey, I think beard was hotter than mustache. Interesting. I agree with you. Mustaches are are good. They are good. Mm -hmm. I'm in.
But I, I for me, yeah, I'm I'm with I'm with Jesse on the beard. Yeah. If I'm if I'm Taylor, I'm like, Travi, can you Travi? Travi, I'm gonna die. The beard back? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go walk outside and die right. I'm gonna now. write Did some fan say Travi. <laughs> I'm looking you forward dare. to the travesty album. Oh. It's going to be amazing. That wasn't, that wasn't good. It was fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now hey, he should open a restaurant called Kelsey's. Um, the, hey! 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 If you're looking for a foundational daily nutritional supplement, might we suggest AG one specifically Jesse? Hmm. What? You're the AG1 ambassador. Me recommending here. it. Well, Jesse I mean, was five foot seven before he started taking this stuff. Right? No, and then he <laughs> shot up AG1 does like not, a beanstalk. Does not make you grow. Mm -hmm. No. What does it make you do? It makes you. It makes you start your day on a healthy note. It has all of the vitamins and minerals you need, and like that's that's what I love about it. I I love. I I don't love it, but I look at the daily nutritional value of a lot of the things I consume, and when I know when I have AG one, I know that I'm getting what I need that day in terms of the vitamins and the minerals I need. You're gonna get things like sustained energy, improved digestion, and support for mental clarity and focus. Uh, something that you should definitely check out is the free offer that you get. Okay, we love this offer. I love free stuff. If a comprehensive solution is what you need to your daily supplemental routine, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash SDP. That's drinkag1.com slash SDP to check it out. Uh, Austin Matthews um, tied up the game at the end of it. Uh, no score in overtime, but I do want to give them a shout out because we give them, uh, we give Matthews and Martyr shit uh, for playing together in overtime. They're usually bad. They were really good with... Uh, David Kampf. Matthew Connor Nice. Kampf. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really right. good with Matthew Nice. I thought they had some chances. They could end the game. It was the best I have seen them. And then he took a penalty. Yeah, well. <laughs> oh. uh, that's true. But I, it's, it's a weird impulse that they started overtime with David Kampf, and then he goes to the bench to change, and Matthews comes over the board, and I'm like, no, that shouldn't be my impulse. Right. But just Matthews and Marner... Uh, are great together, just they are. not three on three. Is um, David Camp the best faceoff guy they have on the team? No, but he's um, he's Sheldon's favorite. Face Tavares guy. is probably the best, mm -hmm. but uh, he's faster than Tavares. Okay, so he's more useful. If they lose the draw, David Camp is the most useful forward to have on the ice. Is yes. Sheldon keeps argument? Yeah, like okay. which I I mean, it means you're expecting to lose, but like. Because even Matthew if you gain possession, you're still losing by not having your best players on the ice. No, but they don't go, even get me started on this. They go and switch. It's so stupid. But then he comes on. <sighs> so if you win, it's a win-win. But if you lose, it's you a have... lose. It's a lose-lose. No, but they he thinks he has the best defensive advantage mm -hmm. by having David. Kane. Yeah, and you know what? For the team that's supposed to finish eighth in the division, that's definitely how I would handle it too. <laughs> First game of the season doesn't matter. First game of the season and against Montreal. I know, but you know this is dating back to last year. Mm -hmm. You know this ain't a new thing. Adam, okay. Th th listen, the Leafs it's my started in overtime with, with David Kampf and won the game, and Adam has never recovered. <laughs> this is against Calgary. How many? Okay, never mind. I'm going to move on. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, Marner, Marner roofs it uh, in the last, uh, last one and, and scores. Now, there was a lot of people who, after the game, were like, well, Sammy. He wasn't good. He wasn't good. No. But there were like three goals where he really didn't have a chance. Uh, yeah, but you, you know what started to pop like into my the, mentions? The, the TJ Brody yeah. slipping. The Timothy Lilligren terrible, terrible giveaway. Terrible. terrible. You know Already what, that's two. You know what started to slip into my mentions? What's Every that? goalie's favorite. Sometimes you just need a save. It's true. It's Sometimes true. You do. Sometimes you need a save, and he wasn't there to provide the need to save. Um, he did actually have a few pretty good saves, though, which he just seemed um, when uh, when Freddie had lost his confidence, like he he was just a statue in the net when he had it, mm -hmm. and when he lost his confidence, holy shit, was he all over the place? And Sammy was really chaotic. He's got to calm down. Well, I I was talking to CJ yesterday. I called him. Uh, while I was walking my dogs, I was like, hey, man, like, just tell me, what was the mood down there? And he's like, well, kind of apologetic. Uh, <laughs> what? Like, the Leafs were kind of like, yeah, we kind of got away with one. Oops. Um, but, but you know, one of the things we talked about is, we, we you know, I, I mentioned the Peter Morazic thing that we broke down. Like, Peter, where are your posts? Oh, I know. Sammy had a little bit of that. Not quite as Peter Morazic, but it was in the vein of. It, he just seemed determined to play the vast majority of the game on his stomach. 
<laughs> like it's just belly flop into belly flop into belly flop. Um, but then like I, I had a bit of a eureka with this because mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I feel good about this because they won. How would I have felt if they lost? And what does it say about this team and their weaknesses? And then I thought about the Oilers getting pumped 8-1. Well, we're getting to that next. Oh, I know. And But I thought to myself, I go, does that change your opinion on the Edmonton Oilers? No. Not a yeah. Not at all. It does entirely. Okay, does. well, you can save that. Okay. Yeah, we'll, you have, you we'll must save that. that. I want to know why, but you can't tell me now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I didn't. I don't think I learned anything about the Toronto Maple Leafs game one. Um, well, and you shouldn't. Yeah. Hockey in the regular season is a trends sport. Take it 10 games by 10 games. What do I what did I learn from them this past month or three or four weeks? Like the offense is gonna score. Mm-hmm. The defense is probably gonna drive you a little nuts, and the goaltending's a bit of a coin flip. Right. And it usually takes teams about 10 games, the first 10 games, to figure it out. Yeah. It is gonna take some time. Like, you know, the interesting thing is is I was watching Fraser Minton last night because everybody was talking about how from preseason to regular season there is a jump. And then from regular season to playoffs, there's another jump. Mm-hmm. And very clearly, like, it wasn't that he had a bad game. He just didn't stand out as much as he did in the reg- in the preseason, rightfully so. He had a couple chances and a giveaway. Sure. Like, it, it, take the good with the bad. But I think it takes players some time to adjust to that. There yeah. is, it means something now. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought he was good. I thought that story of Morgan Riley's parents helping Fraser Mitten's parents find their seat and everything was <laughs> fucking adorable. Just beautiful people. Just Beautiful people. Yeah. Just now, uh, I guess I, I just want to quickly mention that while this show has happened, um, and Elliot Friedman is on a plane without Wi-Fi, which he wanted to tell everybody on Twitter, uh, because he said there's a Devon Tays extension in the works. It hasn't been completed yet, so then he had to jump on a four-hour plane ride. So boohoo, get good, Elliot. Now you can't break the story. Lol. Somebody else. Yeah, lol. Nice um, plane ride, uh, jerk. But it, but it did. How does the plane not have Wi-Fi? I don't know. I, I'm like, what, what, you, fly? what kind of World War II prop fucking plane are you driving in, what's Elliot? That, what's that? I, have, they, have they downgraded your tickets at Sportsnet? What's going on? Okay. What's that one airline that's like famous on Swoop. Ryanair? Oh, Ryanair. Love who's that. Who's famous Hilarious. for being a shitty airline, but they do They, they are. Do it. I, Jesse, they're, they're economy airline. Right, shitty. Right. Cheap. I have it's a just... really stupid question. Mm-hmm. Okay, remember you used to not be allowed to use like your your regular... You, you couldn't... Not Wi-Fi. You had to use your regular like LTE. Mm-hmm. But you weren't allowed to on a plane. Yes, is that still a thing? They tell you to. They tell you it is. It's it's not actually a thing. They're like, oh, I'm gonna interfere with the. It, it. Like, there is the, not a fucking. There's not a recorded instance of that happening. I've always believed that's a that's a myth. A hundred percent. But the, I don't know. What I, is, it, is it like turning the light on in your car and a, you get arrested? Apparently, what it is, and we have. I feel like we've had this conversation on the show. Somebody mentioned it. Somebody was in my DMs about it at one point. And it might have been from Virgin Radio. I can't remember. But they said, listen, we need you to pay fucking attention at the beginning and the end. When people are on their phones, they're not paying attention. So we need you to run through the safety procedures at the beginning. And we need you to know when the plane is landing at the end. Can I tell you a really stupid thing? So that's why they want you to shut it down. What? <laughs> at the beginning of flights, I, uh, <laughs> I pretend to, like, I just, I just look at the flight attendant um, just so that one person is listening. Because I'll look up the plane and no one's looking at them. No, <laughs> no one's even looking. Unless and it's I'm your first like, time I on a flight, that. I know how to do a seatbelt. Thanks so much. Yeah, so I t- I just you know pretend to be attentive and I'm like oh so the seatbelt. Like, they <laughs> like can, I've never they, been on a plane. That's nice of you. That's extremely <laughs> nice of you. I'm sure they really appreciate. Although I don't know. I although don't know. that's probably it. it's kind of weird. It'd be like getting a massage with your eyes open. You know, like it's like weird. Ew. Yeah. Right. <laughs> No, I, I don't fr- think it's anything. I have like a friend. That. She owns a, mis- uh, a mis- like a, a health clinic, and she's like, yeah. She said to me once, "I'm like, what's it like when people like open their eyes and they're, you know, they part of the massage where you're on your back?" She's like, "It's a little weird." So I wonder if it's the same for flight attendants when they're like, uh, "Somebody, why is that person paying attention to this?" <laughs> what you're listening? <laughs> the one thing I think that they can take out of that is they don't need to tell us how to put a seatbelt on. Uh, yeah, they do. They do. Like legally, yeah. But like legally, they shouldn't have to. Like where? Oh, know. where have know. you been? Where? Who could have ever got on a plane in this country 
without a, at least buckling up their seat once, unless you're under the age of 10. You know what? There's a lot of things that we it? shouldn't Wait. have to do. <laughs> yeah, I don't There's a lot of things we shouldn't have to do. I just don't feel do. like you should have to do that. What? And I'm on your team. What are you arguing? I'm what? arguing Adam? that people know how to do a seatbelt. Adam, is if we have this conversation for long enough, Adam's going to turn into Jeff Foxworthy and have the... You might be stupid if... Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> this is from an... Uh, a pilot is the word I was looking for who tries to explain what the airplane mode thing is for airplanes that are capable of performing an auto land procedure where the airplanes autopilots land the plane without control inputs from the pilots must have reliable information from the radio altimeters or these landings in low visibility would not be possible. The fear is that if a passenger's 5G capable device is not in airplane mode, it could cause a spurious signal to be picked up by the airplane's radio altimeter antenna. This could possibly cause an erroneous indication of the airplane's height above the runway. As you can imagine, this could have frightening consequences. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Most people don't put it in airplane mode anyway. Mm. Uh, don't think it's going to happen, but understand that you have to be extremely safe. I think we are flying in the air. They say it for the one in 400 billionth chance that a cell phone could interrupt that. Fair enough. Well... Yeah. I was raised by Clementina, and I'm a f I am I never have it on because I'm polite. afraid. It's very polite of you. Very polite of you to, to pay attention to the safety procedure. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, oh, no one's listening. I'll listen. That's nice because you know what it's like, don't you? You know what it's like I to do, do. stuff. You, 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 know, you were doing the zoo tours, and no one's paying attention. Oh, and it's Babies are crying, and people got to pee. It sucks. It's, oh, man. Like on those like 30... Five degree days in the summer, you're wearing pants as part of your uniform. No one's friggin' listening. Every now and then, I would just be like, "Oh, you know, fart, barf, banana." Like, just <laughs> throw throw it into the speech. See if anyone catches it. They never do. Yep. Um, <laughs> by the way, Devontae, seven years, seven point two five million dollars per year. Seven point two five. Don't you fucking hate it? Oh, Joe Sackett, go to prison. Oh the my deal? god. It's an incredible deal. Drew has been worrying. Oh, he must be just insufferable on my phone right Tickled now. Pink? Tickled Pink. Yeah, there it is. What a deal, he says. And he, he goes LMFAO. Dude, this guy was worried that Devontae's was going to sign for 10. And that was somewhat rumored. And, like, if he went to open market, he probably could have got maybe not 10, but in that neighborhood. But because... Kale McCarr signed one of the most redonkulous contracts in hockey. Mm -hmm. Oh, my well, and it's God. like Colorado. So the great terrible. thing is, is they get to say to him, do you want to continue playing with Kale McCarr or do you want to make $10 million somewhere else? There it is. Guy wants to win. He took less. But 7.25? What's he need the 2.5 for? And at that point, you might as well just round down to 5. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what he was making. Nice, I'm, even I'm pretty sure he was making five and a half before. Yeah, it's greedy. Uh, or like Devon thing, greedy. The only thing I'll say about Devon Taves is that, uh, first of all, he was making 4.1. Uh, he's making 4.1 this year. Lou Lamoureux uh, goes so to jail cheaper. challenge. He is 29 years old. So when this contract expires, he's going to be 37. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. A thirty-seven-year-old making seven point two five isn't the end of the world. It's just not the best deal at the end of it. But as we've seen all this off-season, nobody really cares about the end of these deals. No, no, well, <laughs> they super don't. Uh, they might win a thing, so who cares? The 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 worst contract I think in the NHL right now, or at least one of the worst, is Mark Edward Vlasic. Uh, when he signed it, though, he was an Olympian. Uh, he <laughs> he's thirty-six. He's got this year, next year, and the year after. He'll be thirty-nine when it expires. Yeah. See. Mm. That. And he makes how much does Mark Edward Vlasic make? It's like eight something. Seven. Seven. Yeah. So this that's is a, that's a great deal for Colorado. <laughs> Sorry, Jesse. Go ahead. Oh, you mean it's a great deal for Colorado? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. It, it's not a great deal at the end of it because it's the yeah. Shifley deal at the end of when I'm like, oh, you got to worry about the end of it. It's the Dev Devontae's deal. You got to worry about the end of it. It's the Mark Edward Vlasic deal. You got to worry about the end of it. But who cares? Because hopefully in the meantime, you get to a point where you win a thing. Uh, let me like, just let uh, me just add something to this. Sure. Mark Edward Vlasic's contract includes signing bonuses. Oh, what? He had zero this year, but he'll get, on July 1st, $2.5 million uh, in 2024. And July 1st, 2025, he will also get $2 million. Which oh. makes it easier to trade at the end of it. Because then... After that. Yeah, yes. yeah. Because San Jose will pay out that money. He had a no-move clause for the first five years. He signed it in 1819. It looks like they took the same bet with him 
that the Leafs took, which was, we think the salary cap's going to go up. It was signed July 1st, 2017. Yeah. Wow. You know what? I always complain about how the Leafs got screwed. San by Jose the, did. The, oh, San Jose got screwed. Yeah. Like Brent Burns for nothing. And, oh. Yeah, and Pavelski just letting him walk. Like, what choice did they have? Oh, and, yeah. Really, yeah. really bad. Um, the Oilers get absolutely blown out. Um, I, in fact, in fact, I shouldn't even start it that way. Pretend I didn't say it. Are you ready? Here's my question. <laughs> okay. Are the Edmonton Oilers in danger of missing the playoffs? Jesse Blake. No, they're not in danger of missing the playoffs. They are in danger, however, of, uh, wrecking the confidence of one young Jack Campbell. I, I was coming into the season. I was very high on Jack Campbell bounce back year because I think, you know, another year in Edmonton, another stable um, situation, you know, you get your head uh, in the right place. But we know Jack Campbell's confidence can be shaky. And this isn't the way you want to start the year with a guy you've anointed the starter once again after a very good preseason. So I'm a little worried about Jack Campbell moving forward. So I think you can take a little bit away from game number one, which isn't a thing you want to often do. But in terms of the goaltender situation in Edmonton, it is you need to get it right again this year. And Jack Campbell not being great in game number one is a little bit of cause for concern. I'm trying to think of the logic behind pulling him. Because it was four goals and 16 shots, which, like, listen, that's bad. It's really bad. Um, I've seen worse. And listen, you, you put Jeff Skinner, uh, Jeff Skinner, you put Stuart Skinner in there. And Jeff Skinner and goal would be interesting. Jeff it would be. Sure would. He's got the quick feet. Um, also adorable human. But <laughs> you put Stuart Skinner in there and like you have Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. You're like, okay, we're down three. It's the beginning of the season. We could easily still win this game as long as the momentum changes. Stuart Skinner immediately allows a goal. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I can't really criticize Jay Woodcroft for the move, but like, because Campbell is who he is and he is the way he is, uh, I think I'd have left him in. Uh, you had a good preseason. We started you opening night for a reason. Like, Stuart Skinner was an all star last year. He was their goaltender in the playoffs. Jack Campbell won back this job over the offseason. Yep. They ended last year as Stuart Skinner being their starting goaltender. And and that's because Campbell recovered somewhat, and Stuart Skinner was awful. He was awful. And, uh, I mean, you committed to starting Campbell game one. I think I'd have left him in. Now, for how many more would I have left him in? I don't know. Not eight. Yeah, I think you leave him in for one more. At least. Well, here's the other problem. <clears throat> The Oilers kept taking penalties, yeah. and the Oilers' penalty kill continued to be bad. It was so bad. Now, again, it's overreaction season. This is the first game. I don't know why I have to keep qualifying this, but just in case somebody downloads this clip and throws it on Twitter and thinks that I'm going after oh. the Oilers and whatever. Hmm. What, what are you going to do? Play whack-a-mole with that? Yeah, exactly. You're no, right. You're right. Fuck it. <laughs> they were bad. Um, and, and I think what I found interesting, this wrinkle, because like, after the game, apparently... The Oilers players were pissed that at 6-1, the Canucks ran their top power play unit out there. Oh, shut up. And I, I, have to, I have to again say, I don't understand this about hockey culture. No. If they're kicking your ass, it's your fault, man. Also, Stop. Did you see Leon Dreisaitl slash? Did you see no. his penalty? Two-handed. Come on, man. It's it's late in the game. What are you doing? You're already down six to one. Low key vicious. Like those those guys. Uh, and good for him. I those mean. guys. Oh, I mean, like it'll. It's one of those things. Ken Reed room. It's, it's one of those things people remember. Like Malkin gets room. Kucherov gets room because they're all a little squirrely. Yeah, Drysdale gets room. He gets room. Yeah. Um. You know, and he's basically hitting you with a goalie stick. That thing. Mm -hmm. Um. I think it's a compliment. Like, for a lot of teams, I could see how it would be an insult and it'd be uh, infuriating. But, like, does any lead feel safe against Edmonton? Oh, no. You can't feel good about that. Yeah. They, they came back. What is it? What did they come against Calgary? It was five goals in the playoffs? Uh, in the playoffs? Oh, yeah. That, that game won where they lost it and they came back. And they were, they like, it was like 5 nothing, down, and then it was 5-5. Five, five, and then it was 6-2. Oh, it was whatever. crazy. 6-2, and, and they tied it before... I want to say it was before the end of the second. That, that ended the Calgary Flames for even the next year. A game that they won mm. <laughs> broke their confidence. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it was, it was, it was wild. There's, there's a couple. Well, one other thing from that game I wanted to touch on because the defense was 
it was atrocious in terms of like, hey, nobody kind of can get anything concrete going in terms of a system, in terms of good play. And uh, Brett Kulak got, he couldn't handle a saucer pass on that first goal. Yes. It just goes over his stick yeah. and it's disgusting. Passing so bad beginning of the season. CC yeah. got walked a couple times just off of the rush. He can't handle anything. Did you see that Pedersen hit on him? Pissed yeah, and now Pedersen rocks him. Dude, well, now Pedersen definitely left Superman the Superman left yeah. into his <laughs> chest. <laughs> charging and nothing was called. For sure charging. Charging, Superman wow. so we didn't mention Geo should have definitely not be jumping on people yeah. after that Bertuzzi yeah. throw. Yeah. Generally yeah. speaking, we don't want to see both skates leave the ice yes. in any and situation. Then, and then there's this play behind the net. It was Darnell Nurse trying to pass the puck to Evan Bouchard. Oh, boy. It did not lead to a goal. But it was one of the sloppiest plays I saw in the first Let's two see nights of, Let's of see. hockey. You we got? can't play this, but um, I just want you guys to watch this back. Darnell Nose is behind the net. He's passing that? it to Evan Bouchard, and Evan Bouchard just isn't looking. It's at ten twenty-two of the first, if anybody's interested, Jesse, can it goes we do it right past? Can though. we do a? Can we do a screenshot? Yeah, we can definitely do that. A scoring I can do, chance. For I can sure. do some freeze frames here. Yeah, I know it's. I know it's a bit uh, of a pain. Now, here's the thing, too, Jess. Ooh. That pairing was brutal. Yeah, they were bad the whole game. Now, um, so there's look. First off, what's Bouchard doing? Legs straight, stick off the ice. Well, yeah, who I ever mean, taught you that? You're not you're not worrying about him getting the puck, I guess. Yeah, and if, if, if it looks like he's not paying attention, it because it's because it is. He is not paying attention now, and he goes to receive the puck, and it goes right by him. Ekholm was not in the opening night lineup, right? He was hurt. Yeah. Okay, so I don't think this is typically a pair because I would never play these guys together five on five but you look at look at garland and i think it's is it kuzmenko i think so yeah so those two guys are it's interesting what talk doing here this is 10 24 of the first the game's literally just started okay yeah we're 20 percent into the game and he's already got the full court press on the oilers defense because he knows those guys are are not great in their own end so garland's not even really engaged because he's pointing like they think this puck is going up the left side of the ice oh, yeah i i kind of I think this might be on Nurse. Like, well, wait, like a, but did you see how the, did you see how Bouchard tries to receive the pass? You he can't. Doesn't. Look. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. That's, <laughs> see, look, look. Nurse has already made. Hold on, go back to the last one yeah, yeah. again. Okay, hold on. Sorry. There you go. Uh, okay, one more step ahead. Uh, try. There you go. Okay, so Nurse has already made the pass, and Bouchard even before that, you could see. Nurse has made the pass, and Bouchard's stick is not on the ice yet. No, like he's but not. There, but it was behind. It rings there's behind. the puck. Yeah, it rings behind him. It's like it's briefly yeah. for right under the Tim place. Hortons logo. It is always 20 minutes fresh at Tim Hortons. Wow. Um, yeah, you also you lose the puck because of the graphics of the board. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, actually? Yeah. Well, look, you know what? It I'm goes glad. under the. Oh, th no, yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's there. <laughs> oh. And it feels so shitty. <laughs> <laughs> no, the fans love it. <laughs> you lose the puck. Like, um, oh, okay. great job. So, um, <laughs> anyway, the, the point is the defense was so sloppy. Terrible. And here's, what, here's what's interesting about it. Uh, in 10 games, it won't matter. Um, no. You know, we are overreacting. That's the point of right now. But it, to be honest, uh, most, game, most teams had kind of sloppy games. For the Canucks, there's a couple of things that are really great stories. First off, Brock Besser finally looks healthy. His mm -hmm. hat trick had to feel really good. And Canucks fans, it was like... <sighs> a, ha a hat trick? Didn't he get a hat Oh, no. He, no. He didn't well, have a hat Jesse, what did he get? They got taken away. Why, Jesse? He got a Texas hat trick is what I'm told it's called. You suck. A Texas hat trick. Yeah, you know, because everything's get, bigger in Texas. You don't you don't get a regular hat trick once you hit four. They yeah. take it away. Oh, God. Did you see that Matthews is like he got the he's one of the like three players in NHL history to have two hat tricks on opening night. And well, I was like, Jesse disagreed. That was his first ever hat trick on well, an opening night. If it's a Texas a hat trick, is it not still a hat trick? It is a Texas. It is a different entity. Four, you lose the three, and you get the whatever that you want to call the four. If you want to call it a Texas hat trick, go ahead. If you want to call it a, a Matthews, you can call it that. But the four is a four in and of itself, and you lose the three, which was the hat trick. Can I tell you the frustrating thing? They should give back thing? the hats. Tell you the most frustrating thing? So my in-laws were over to watch the game. Uh, Natalie's family, all humongously fans. And um, when Matthew scored his third, it was like, wow, if he gets his fourth in overtime here. I'm like, and then I, and then so I, I launch into, I know you guys haven't heard this, but this is what Jesse thinks. So I explain the four goals versus three and how it's not a hat trick anymore. And Natalie looks at me and she's like, what's there to argue? Yeah. What? And I said, excuse me. 
And she's like, yeah, it's not a hat trick anymore. It's four goals. Exactly. And I said, Natalie. And she's like, no, objectively, though, it is four goals. I'm like, you got to stop this. And we had like a whole, we, in between uh, the periods, we had like a whole like debate about it. I think because because we talked to the the hardcore of the hardcores of the hockey people, but I think you expl- explain it to somebody who just like doesn't watch the game and it's just hey, it, I this is the thing that happens. And they get four. It's something else. See, right? I look at it as like a hat trick is a car, and then the fourth goal is just a trailer. You know, that's how I look at it. Adam, this is why no, you never trust the Dutch. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Can't trust. The Tell Dutch. her I said that yeah. from me. <laughs> Tell her I said that. Austin Powers' dad was right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you for getting that old reference. Uh, the other the other story, which is uh, very interesting, is Thatcher Demko playing with flu-like symptoms, which I don't know why they call it flu-like symptoms. Thatcher Demko had the flu. Uh, but he vomited in his mask, and Rick Tockett's finally like, okay, come on out. <laughs> And that's and it's like a seven one game. He's like, nah, no, nah, we're not gonna have vomiting in our mouth. So the Oilers were mad about that as well because they thought they were trying to just preserve mm-hmm. Demko. Like, oh, we're kicking their ass so bad, we're gonna put our backup in. <laughs> no, he barfed him. Yeah, and and I I get that, but listen, and they I would say know. this if it was the Leafs too. If the Leafs were sour about a team pulling out their goalie or whatever, I'd be like, get fucking good then. Yeah, Play simply better. don't get your ass kicked. Oh, is your yeah. are your feelings hurt? Play better next time. Mm-hmm. Show up. Yeah. A lot of people paid good money to see you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, the CJ show was talking about how the next day McDavid and the entire Oiler, Oilers uh, crew had to go to, I, I guess it was West Edmonton Mall and sign a bunch of autographs. Oh, so I, I bet that today, went over well. Because the game was Wednesday, right? And so then oh. today it would have been auto, or Thursday. Sorry, today's not Thursday. Thursday was autograph day at West Edmonton Mall. So they had to go look at all these fans after yeah. getting their ass kicked on oh, opening that's night. that's great. Isn't that brutal? Hey. And McDavid, too, who's already not emotional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he actually I saw the quote actually now that I think of it of him in the dressing room. Don't know why they were bringing in their backup goalie. Like he got he was well, he didn't, steamed he didn't about know. that. He didn't know. But yeah, but I no, I I know he didn't know, but still it's but sort of like, no, but, like, but the point remains, play better, well, man. Yeah. Like okay, are, have you been paying attention to this uh Phillies Braves thing uh with and, the guy in the clubhouse being yeah, quoted and and, and, mm-hmm. and Bryce he first Harper. off, he was I know everybody's dunking on the Braves. He was off the record. He was not on the record when he made that comment. I think it's bullshit that it's out there. And none of us would be talking about it if the Atlanta fucking won. Yeah. I Still also, I also disagree because, like, there's cameras. She has, she has a, one of the reporters was talking about it, and she has it, like, on audio. You know? I know that, but was he, he – it was, it was not post-game, was it? It was during the game. He was in the clubhouse. No, it was in the locker room after the game. Oh, okay. Well, Everybody was in there. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways. Um, no yeah, one cares if win. <laughs> just, just, just win. fucking win, just win. <laughs> um, but now here's what's going to be fun is it sets up a killer Saturday night because right after the Leafs game you got Oilers Canucks at 10 o'clock and that they're playing each other again yep. yes the home that home. is going to be a game and they're and the Oilers are at home oh, 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 oh baby oh, oh baby oh man oh who's who's the backup in Vancouver now uh, it doesn't matter it's not it's going to be Demko well because I was going to be like <laughs> I'd be man I would be getting him Gatorade I would be waiting on him hand and foot if I was his backup. Yeah, please don't put me. In Thatcher, that what do you need? What do you need? Yeah, what do you need? Whatever you, whatever you want, I got it. <laughs> whatever you want, I got it. I'm not fucking playing. Saturday. It was uh, Casey DeSmith who went into the game. Casey DeSmith, Thatcher, whatever you want, I got it. You want? You need Advil? Hmm. You need a little Gatorade? This used Powerade? to work for Jarry. This Bio steel. <laughs> Bio steel. Um, what, what do you need? Ottawa did only dress eleven forwards and six defense for their opener. Uh, Zach McEwen was not ready to go. Now it was interesting. I was watching Insider Trading, and uh, Darren Dreger did say that the Heat is a little up because of this situation in Ottawa. Well, unforced okay. error. It, it is an unforced error, but you know what's interesting? I think there were three or four teams around the league who iced short rosters on opening night. That's disgraceful. So the, the King, whole point the of Kings did it because of injury. I know that. Well, so does Sens. Well, they all did. So did the Sens. No, the Sens did it because they can't manage a salary cap. I mean, it's both, right? Like if you're one injury away from not being able to ice a full roster. No, but this this was we should have a player, but we don't know how to budget. Yeah, was the, like, was the Kings not the same? Uh, Arvidsson went down, and yeah, I'm pretty sure they just couldn't afford. To bring in someone new because yeah, they don't no, want them but, on long no, term. This this is like we should have a guy under contract, but because we can't manage a salary. Oh yeah, can't that's also true on yeah. our team. Why can't I have an emergency right winger? They do have emergency recalls. Once you no, play. 
No, no. Like you know how there's like a emergency backup. No. You want, I need you want a, somebody from college I'm, hockey? Yeah, to I want a random beer contract? leaguer on my fourth line. <laughs> That's actually, I want it. That's not a bad idea. I kind of like that. Uh, yeah, Except and now out die. there to take the face off <laughs> Gus. <laughs> you tell me you wouldn't want that. No, it's not safe. Like, you would die. Oh, shit. You could die. That's actually a really good point. Uh, yeah, these guys are strong. Emergency backup is okay because they're not eligible to be hit. Yeah. But, like, you just send some random beer leaguer out there. Oh, oh. and... We lost another one. <laughs> Do you Jesse, guys go ahead. Not, I think there's a stark difference between the way the Senators handled things and the way a team like the Kings just fell into it. You know, because they had their lineup set with the salary cap. They well, should have been able to ice the team if not for a last second injury that takes somebody out of the lineup and then we don't have the luxury of like time in the season to call somebody up and do all that stuff. Yeah, you're right. But yeah, went was, yeah. into this with being down a man because they can't budget money. But to become Alan Walsh for a second, uh, part of the reason is they also aren't carrying any spares because they can't. And I believe Arvidsson is on long-term injury reserve as of, as of this morning. Oh, good. I'm glad I drafted him. So, <laughs> uh, so Jesse, yeah, good point. Good point. It and is, I, I, the, th listen, the Sens situation is definitely the most egregious. I also told mm -hmm. you last, last, uh, last episode, and I mean it, I think he's a rookie at managing the cap. When you don't have to play to the cap, it's really easy to manage the cap. But when you're spending to the cap, it is not. It's, it's really uh, difficult. You need assistance. It's a new there's, challenge. 100%. There's no way that you could just figure... You guys know how complicated the cap rules are. And it's funny. Whenever we mess up on like uh, uh, some bizarre 1A, 1B cap rule, you have people in your mentions going, How come you don't know? Oh, yeah. Okay. So you know every single cap rule off by heart. Have that conversation at the bar. I bet it's fun. <sighs> no, you don't. Not everybody's going to know everything about that fucking cap. It's so complicated. No. Unless you have a guy like Brandon Pridham who does. Yeah. You know what? We're such a, a Leaf show. Like, because this is our send story today. Daniel Alfredson's at practice. Well, I was going to get to that. Yeah, but you didn't. didn't but I wanted to get. Didn't, I was didn't. getting into the timeline of events. It is great to see him back. It's pretty cool. And and uh, they have they haven't announced. I think Steve Sayo said he's back. They haven't really announced what his position will be, but he was practicing. Yeah, he's officially with the organization. Like, he's that's their Dave Keon. Yeah. Right? Like, uh, the greatest player in franchise history, or one of them, and um, estranged from the franchise, and now he's back. Imagine what uh, Alexi Yashin could have been had he not sat out an entire year and demanded a trade. He was on. He was going to have his number retired. You, you know what I forgot? Um, he was until so I did good. a little research recently. Is he sat out an entire year and then he played? Yeah, like he went yeah. back to Ottawa for a while and he went then went, got traded to the Islanders. Yeah, he played for an entire year. Where they made him play eighty two games. Where he was he good. was a GM in the KHL while still um, earning an NHL salary after getting bought out by the Islanders. Yeah. That really was a great career that wasn't. You know? Yeah, it. I mean, he was he was unreal. People forget how good Alexi Yash. Was. Like in the dead puck era, eighty or sorry, ninety eight, ninety nine, ninety four points, eighty two games, and a couple forty goal seasons in there. Too. Yeah, very very good. Yeah, he, he came. No, he sat out, came back, and scored forty goals. That's insane. That's insane. You should be able to do that. Two thousand, two thousand one, height yeah. of the dead puck era. Like didn't didn't go to Europe, and like stay fresh. Didn't play. He just chilled, straight chilled, and scored forty. Ugh. Um, Monster. I liked this storyline uh, a lot because under the radar, and this this game went under the radar a little bit just because of the teams involved. Um, the Columbus Blue Jackets and the Philadelphia Flyers squared off. And what I loved was right before, uh, the day before, um, Ivan Provorov basically sort of, without, I don't think he meant to, but uh, he kind of trashed the way that the Flyers play under torts. One day that story's going to come out. The Flyers didn't like him, and, and the he feeling didn't like the was mutual. He said, Ivan Provorov, this is before the game these quotes came out. Ivan Provorov says, it has been really, quote, really refreshing to be on a team that, quote, uh, can make plays and is allowed to make plays. Um <laughs> Uh, he also mentioned his play away. Uh, his play was regressing in Philly because of quote rimming and throwing the puck away. Now, you know, rimming can't get in the way, uh, but that is a John Tortorella system where you th you're throwing it around and it kind of gets annoying. Then here's where it doesn't get good: is they proceed to get crushed by the Flyers. Um, that was well, not... I mean, they're not good. <laughs> Neither are the Flyers. <laughs> no, but but. Eh. 
They're not good, but I just thought it was kind of funny. They're still doing line at center. I don't know why they're doing that. And they scratched Kent Johnson to do it. Yeah, and so apparently what happened there? they were talking about that today again on Insider Trading, and they were saying that um, uh, Paul Vincent, the coach, was like, you had a bad training camp, man. I know you're super talented, but you're not going to play tonight. You're not playing opener. Not with a camp like that. Wow. And they still see him, obviously, as a part of the future and all that stuff, but uh, um, he had a bad camp, and it was them sending a message. Um, I, and, and, you know, Adam Fantilli looked good, though. Yeah. I wonder what percent of you sitting up in the press box goes good. <laughs> you know what I mean? What do you mean? Like, what percent of you sees your team get absolutely clapped when, when you're a healthy scratch and you just go good? I don't think... I don't think Ken Johnson's feeling that way. I think he's feeling embarrassed because it's a story when he's not playing. He was very good last year. Yeah, but who looks dumb right now, Vincent or him? Well, they don't have a lot of pressure on them, so I think him. Yeah. If you if your maybe. head coach won't dress you against the Philadelphia Flyers, opening night, opening night, yeah, you're go, you're the one who's embarrassed. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough look. It's a really tough. Look. And and sometimes you got to <laughs> send a message. And I, what I like about Paul Vincent, apparently he's this guy's been a, a coach and waiting for a long, long time is that he has stepped in there after the mess that 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 upper management put them in tough, with Babcock. Tough job. And he is setting the tone. You're not going to get away with this shit. I don't care that I'm not Mike Babcock. I'm still not going to let you get away with it. Because mm -hmm. rookie coaches have the hardest time. Because like the players will look at you and go, why should I listen to you? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, uh, I'm also a little bit... Uh, I felt terrible about uh, Warinsky. I know it's a quad contusion. Yeah, that's he'll be out like a week. But that yeah. sucks. He can't, he can't stay healthy, and it's a real shame. Yeah. And, and that game, yeah, I know you said they got crushed by the Flyers, but that, that game, both one of my favorite things about that game is that both goalies had two goals against. What? Exactly. And the game ended 4-2. Oh, right, because there was two empty netters, wasn't so, there? Oh! So, it was 2-1 in the third period, and the Blue Jackets pulled their goalie. So, uh, empty net, Flyers score an empty net. Right. 3-1, right? And then still only two goals against because there's no goalie in there. The Blue Jackets then score with their net empty to make it 3-2. And then the Flyers put another one right. in the empty net, ending 4-2. So, each goalies ended up only allowing two goals while they're in net. Hilarious. But Which, the team loses 4-2. I think both goalies would call that a good night. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Their well, that's hilarious. We're both like 940. Yeah, you know? that's hilarious. So, uh, I sorry. thought that was a very I, fun. I don't know why I said crushed. Yeah, no, it was a very. It was close more game like, hey, there. it was more of like a. I'm sure Flyers fans look to uh, to Provorov, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. flipping the bird. That's what I meant. Sorry. Yeah. Um, no, it's all good. Uh, uh, oh my God, where was I? Oh, Sean I don't know. Sean I don't Couturier, know getting him in the game, and since twenty, it's been what six hundred and thirty three days. I think mm -hmm. Grav tweeted. I don't know why. I had no idea he hadn't played in that long. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, okay. I knew he'd been out. So let me ask you guys this. Okay. Okay. Now, Steve, I know what Steve's answer is going to be. I don't know what Jesse's answer is going to be. Okay. Okay. Do you knowing that now, mm -hmm. and obviously taking Ryan Ellis into consideration as well, mm -hmm. do you feel a little bit bad because Chuck Fletcher designed the team with those two guys at the center of it, and we've been very hard on on his administration there, and I think rightfully so. Flyers fans have too. Do you not feel like ah, there's a little bit of luck involved? A little bit. Uh, I mean, there's obviously luck involved. I th I think it's two different players. I think you have Sean Couturier, who is coming into his own as a perennial Selkie guy, mm -hmm. Selkie conversation guy. And then there's Ryan Ellis, who you acquired knowing he was busted. Mm -hmm. Like you paid a pretty penny for a guy who you knew had a very extensive injury. He, had, he played four games for them, okay? Four And he was good in those four games. He's a good hockey player. We had five points in those four games. I know, that's crazy. That's and so nuts. Never, we'll never play for the Flyers again. That's it's, so nuts. Yeah. And, like, uh, obviously something happened that made it worse, but, like... It's like Pavel Bure with the Florida Panthers. What could have been had he not got injured? Like, how do you... That's still one of the dumbest stats, by the way. Crazy. The the biggest gap, I think, in NHL history between the team's leading scorer and the second. He had, I want to say it was 93 points. Second leading scorer on the Panthers at 37. That's embarrassing. Points. 
Like, what, were they all solo breakaways? Why did, why did he want to leave Vancouver in the first place? Just stay there, man. I don't know. Trade you to Florida I like, don't at, know. at the worst years of being a Florida Panther. I don't know. It's man. always unfortunate when these things happen. Like, we're going to watch Gabriel Landeskog miss a full season of hockey. Oh, that sucks. You know, and we won't see him for a full year. But the thing about Chuck Fletcher was that he was buying in a situation where his team should have been rebuilding, and that was his flaw. It wasn't the time to buy Ryan Ellis and Sean Couturier, yeah. and that's what you were doing wrong. And, and the empty net goal goal scored by a cam at atkinson who hadn't scored a goal since 2022 you know so like it was it was uh everybody <laughs> right. who hadn't played for the flyers in a year and a half is back and cam was the torts guy yeah cam is the one who's selling the torts system and they needed him last year uh because uh he was going to be the guy in the dressing room was like listen just listen to john trust him because john and cam get along really well apparently. underrated offensive player Oh, yeah. yeah. Also, um, I remember when uh, the Leafs played um, uh, Columbus uh, in the play-in round at the, mm. you know. Uh, I try not to. Um, and Cam Atkinson was just on fire in that series. And I, I remember tweeting one morning. I was like, good morning to everyone except Cam Atkinson. And he liked the tweet. And he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> so he had a good sense of humor about it. <laughs> he was uh, eight for eight in those playoffs. Eight goals, uh, eight points in eight games uh, that year. Wow. This, this is the goofy wow. Pavel Burry thing that I brought up. He had in 2000-2001 uh, with the Florida Panthers, he had 92 points in 82 games. The next leading scorer was Victor Kozlov, who did only play 51 games, but he had 37 points. Bure had 59 goals. Again, the next closest guy was Victor Kozlov. He had 14. <laughs> Is that the same Victor Kozlov that won Cups in Detroit? Uh, let me know. Because there was a Kozlov that won cups in Detroit. Was Slava. There? Slava. Slava Kozlov and Victor Kozlov. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit. That's nuts. That's one of the craziest gaps I've ever seen in um, sport. Uh, Jack Hughes scored a nice little goal off the back of Vili Husso. Jesse, mm. can we comment on Vili Husso in the opener? Uh, Vili Husso was the only reason that the Red Wings were in that game. Uh, the Red Wings were an awful team on on Wednesday night and I don't I don't know how they didn't lose by more Billy Huso tried his best I'm thinking that the Red Wings again it's overreaction season but I'm still not sold on whatever the hell this was I like the Sprong thing I like the Debrin cat trade don't think it helps them too too much maybe they're carrying three goalies because they thought they could use them all at once <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> might have helped um all right now gentlemen I have some trivia for you mm. all right we already have a suspension in the NHL. Okay. Can you tell me who it is and for how long? Uh, does Kaliev count? Because yeah, he was two from games. Pre Kaliev, and they called him up. To okay, start. not preseason. I'm talking regular season. Uh, uh, shoot, I think I do know this. Brett Howden. Brett Howden. How many games? Two. Four. Uh, fucking. Just clocking Brandon Tanev in the head. Yeah, yeah. thing you can't do that. <laughs> Dude, it, like that was uh, you can't do that, Brett. Howard. It reminded it, me of uh, Steckel on Crosby, like mm. real, real bad. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, good. It was dirty. Yeah, which I uh, wasn't suspended. Uh, Danny Ryland, uh, former guest on this show, founder of the NWHL, was hired by the Edmonton Oilers as a regional oh, scout. That's pretty cool. Good for her. Pretty cool. Um, now I wanted to play this um, last episode, uh, but we are going to continue to cover the ongoing saga that is NHL 24 fans uh, or NHL EA sports NHL fans. And the, the, well, the game's not going so hot. Um, I still see mixed reviews. Uh, well, okay. So a lot of them are bad. I want to go to, uh, so, so let's talk about when a contract extension is signed, you can go in and you can edit contracts, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. So if you want to do that with certain players, how do you do it, Steve? Uh, oh God, I haven't even played that function in many years, but I'm pretty sure you just like click on the player, select the player and mm -hmm. you can negotiate a contract. Now our boy Tugi, who yeah. I've mentioned before, yeah. uh, this is a, a couple of, a couple of days old, this video, cause I was going to run it in the last episode, but I couldn't, mm -hmm. I would like you to watch him try to edit Rasmus Dahlin's contract. Here we go. So he's what do you guys want to talk about? He's trying to give him an extension. <laughs> he's trying to go down. We got to go all the way to $11 million. That's 14 oh my God, right this now. And take this forever. is as fast as it goes. So, oh, my so God. What's happening is he's trying to change the contract in the menu screen, but it doesn't move fast. It goes down by 
25k at a time. So he's at 14.640 million dollars and he can now, only go down 25k. So, oh no, it's not even 25, it's wait, 5k at a time. Oh my god. So moves, Where does the video start? Uh like, at 14.9 and then he can only go down 5k for each hit of the well he's just holding down the tick, uh, tick, the tick, analog tick, stick. Tick 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 yeah. tick. You can't tick, hold tick, and and slide. Like, no. He's he's not going slowly on purpose. Tick 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 it's, tick tick. No, he's just he's holding it. Yeah, he's <laughs> still. Now he's at thirteen point eight. Holy cow! This is torture. So it took a minute to go down one million dollars when you're trying to change the contract. He's not even going to make it by the end of the video. Did no one use this video? Is going to end. Did no one use this function on like the testing or the dev team and well, not r sit there for like four minutes and be like, "Hey, this is somebody fix this." When he didn't the, even get to thirteen point four. When, yeah, that was video. a minute twenty three, and we're at thirteen million. <laughs> it was so, like, a million and a half. so let me ask you guys something. I don't know in the last time you would have used that function, uh, but it clearly could not have been the way last year, right? Uh, I, I pull up the game and try. I assume not. I basically only play like. Uh, world of Chell now. Um, I just don't have as much. Listen, when I was like, well, I could try the whole girls thing. Nope, they're not interested. All right, Chell. And I would play like <laughs> half a decade's worth of seasons uh, in one NHL game. And I would play this all the time. But now I just don't have time. Right. Yeah. Big Kid, wife guy. High five. Kids will do that, right? And, um, and I think I think and the, a dog. the point here is not that necessarily the game is bad. I don't know what the, the play in the game is, and, and I'm sure they'll patch a bunch of things, but the point is that a game can be ruined in the death by a thousand cuts way. Yeah. It's the little details, especially when it, with a game as detailed as NHL is with the jerseys and everything else you can customize. It is very, very frustrating to have that. The... Um the uh, the hitting looks unusable. Yeah, like the the hip check. So you guys aren't playing it, eh? I haven't. I haven't even downloaded it. Really? Yeah. I don't know what for. What are you gonna do with the Dangle Navy guys? Just keep playing. Uh, we're bits? gonna find another game. Like I don't know. We might end up getting it. Like who knows? Maybe there's a, a patch and it's great. Like maybe this is how it happens. You know? Like I don't know. Am I gonna? I, I don't see myself stopping playing video games. Well, no, of course not. Ever. Red Dead exists. It's yeah. Like it's going to be like, we're going to be the generation that's playing video games into our seventies, <laughs> which mm -hmm. we haven't really seen, but like, I don't know, not every day. And like when, how does, how do you drift away from video games? You know what I mean? Well, I, I just play something else. You just play something else. I play Star Wars. They got a know. new big game, open world game coming out. Dude, they spend, Companies spend billions of dollars on these games. They, they like these games have like a gross domestic product. I think that might be the problem with EA. Like, I wonder if the budgets just aren't there. I just wonder if we think it's a bigger deal than it is, and it's really just a a, a lower grade product, and they don't invest the money, and because it doesn't make as much money. Like, you know, hockey's not the most. Hockey's not uh, NHL isn't Madden. You know, this, the budgets aren't the same. And I wonder if things like this are missed because they don't have the money to do as much testing as they'd like. You know what I think I'm going to do? Play some ODR Hockey Heroes. Yeah. Hey, fully funded, by the way. <laughs> Fantastic. And by the way, there are bonuses to going over. Uh, and I think they're almost at 420 backers. Nice. Hey. hey. That's great. Uh, by the way, I was doing some research. And I averaged out the amount of money he's raised versus how many people um, have donated. And at the time that I did the research for that, or that I averaged it out, it was like $100 a back. Wow. Which is a lot of money, which tells you how much people want this. Passion. A hundred. I was, I was like, ah, throw five bucks or whatever. A yeah. hundred dollars per person in yeah. this economy? I mean, like, I'm not going to tell you not to, but no, like, that's great. That's not, that's, can I we wasn't talk expecting about, you to do that. Can we that. talk about backing something else? What? I've created my Easter Seals page for Rachel's Raiders. Let's go, Jesse. Yours is open as Let's well. Let's go. I'm Let's last go, minute. Buddy. Last minute. Let's go, Jesse, for signing up. Let's go. So in the Let's in go. the description of this podcast, <laughs> if you want to donate to my page or Steve's page, you can hit that right now. And those are the only two pages that you'll be able to yeah, donate you, to. You can also donate to mine or Jesse's page. <laughs> Mine's coming after your next paycheck. I'm waiting for you. Sign up for the damn thing.
it. No, I'm not going to force pressure people into it, okay? Sign <laughs> Smack you right into the side. You the know I'm always late on this. Adam yes. and I are uh, Sean Couturier and Ryan Ellis of That's this, right. uh, the, the Eric Lindros Celebrity Classic because we haven't played it in a couple of years. Ah. That's, that is true. Last year, I had a busted ankle for during the fall. Oh, that's right. I was supposed to play and then, what was it, two you, weeks before? Yeah, you hurt yourself. I, it's fucking it destroyed my ankle. I'm all good now. And Adam, you didn't play last year. My gear was four hours away from here. Yeah, it was in Perth, Ontario. Hockey equipment, and you didn't want to go get it because it's four hours away. Yeah, but this year it's here. We're both going to be there. Yay! Uh, I'm excited. I haven't played hockey in a while. It's going to be fun. Oh, cool! You're off the team. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> no. oh, yeah! Because Rachel's Raiders are so good. We are. No, we have a really good goalie. If listen, if you're gonna what? What's it? If you're gonna be dumb, you got to be tough. Yeah, or whatever. If you're going to be bad, you better have a good goalie. And we do. And we do. We have a pearl of a goalie. I love it. Jeremy Pearl. Beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. Cool. All right. So you can sign up for that now. Um, Steve, I just want to ask you a quick question before we wrap the show. Boxers. Uh, how did it feel to do your first LFR? Oh, man. Really good. Um, always first day of school jitters for the first LFR. Mm -hmm. And I hope I remember how to do it. And uh, it turns out I remembered how to do it. Um, Saturday is going to be fascinating. The second LFR of the season, I'm going to have to edit on my own. Oh, uh, which uh, I'm a little out of practice, so we'll see how that goes. But like, <laughs> what? You, the other day when you came in here, like uh, worried about having to edit it yourself, it was very funny. Well, <laughs> that's what yeah. I'm laughing about. I know I did it literally over a thousand times over 15, 14 years 14 yeah. years and oh, now man. you have to do one and you're like oh no myself. i gotta fire up i movie drew is having the best time he's got a devon taves sweetheart extension and he's on a bachelor party like it's a good time he's just having such a great time so i will be editing that but um damn you know, ah, it feels so good to be back. Mm -hmm. And like, I just, every year I have a little moment to myself where I'm just standing in the blue room and I'm like, ah, oh, this fucking rules. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. Yeah, dude. It's, it's so great. And I, I love doing it and friggin' a hundred thousand views for the first one. That's so stupid. Nice. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. It's this, fine though. My life is dumb. Like how is, how is this my life? That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense that this is my life. Thank God. Like, I don't have many things I'm good at. <laughs> so, and I found this, and this is my life. Look at this. Do you want to tell everybody? This, this is bullshit. Do you want to tell We're everybody right now. how it went when you tried to replace the filter in the furnace? Oh, for fuck's sake. I don't think I've heard this story. Oh, you were oh yeah, you were in there for You were in here this morning. <laughs> what happened? Oh, we shot a. Maddie's laughing too. We Man, this was, was a story. It was bad. It was like, bad. Were you, trying to shoot, were you trying to replace it here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we were, um, we were shooting a floorball video in our like furnace room. Mm hmm. And, um, I, I, it's like, it was like the first time it had occurred to me, like, oh, we have a furnace, mm -hmm. which means we have like an air filter. We have two actually. Yeah. yeah we have two. Right. So we should, that out to him. we should replace the, I wonder how bad the air filters are. And I pull them out and they're fucking awful. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to, I spent like 10 minutes trying to cram in a new air filter only to discover it was the wrong size. <laughs> And they were two different sizes. Air filter should just flop in. Yeah, yeah, no, it didn't. I was like, oh, Steve, I think that's for the other one. And I went, <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you wait for me to come? We I because I have it. a grown man and I can do it myself. It was, it was the, the, the air filters, as anybody who has ever changed an air filter would know, it says the size on it. In big bold letters, sixteen by twenty or sixteen by twenty-four. I've and never had of, two. And one of the furnaces is there is sixteen by twenty-four, and the other is sixteen by. 20. I didn't know and that. Steve tried for like a good ten minutes to shove the sixteen by twenty-four into the sixteen by twenty. <laughs> but I stuck to it because I care. My apologies. I remember my. Uh, I remember we helped Jesse move once, just one time. Yeah, and, and never uh, again. And uh, and yeah, because I hired moving next time. Because don't do that to your friends. Well, at, you know, in your twenties, you can get away with it. Yes. Once yes. you cross the the thirty threshold, pizza and beer is not going to do it. Sorry, sorry, yeah. guys, you're old enough to buy to to buy movers. But in, in your, I agree with that. In your twenties, there's you can do it. Yeah. yeah. So we're this is our late twenties, a while ago. But I remember, I remember we were like, oh, we need a screwdriver, and I'm like, oh, I have one of those in my truck. And Steve's like, oh, aren't you a fucking adult? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? You don't have a screwdriver in your car? And he's like, oh, you have a screwdriver in your car? <laughs> I was like, oh, all right. 
<laughs> anyway, I really am a fucking child. Like, yeah, I, no, uh, it's good. I, I can. I'm happy to report that the air filters are now I'm in the right. Congrats, front look at who, gentlemen. I'm so look at who. They are in the right. Front That's right, now, Maddie. Now, for pointing out. It was it Maddie was, that did it? No, was, no, no, I did it, but like, but no, it was me who said I think that's for the other one. Oh, oh just, yeah. and like, uh, <laughs> well, I want to say this. Uh, Maddie was too busy taking shots on the net with the floorball stick. Who's gonna? I just having a good time in the corner. Who's gonna put it in their calendar that those need to be replaced every three to six months? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll make a note now. Okay. Oh, there you go. Because you gotta, you know, there's a lot of people yeah, that come neither, in out of here. The yeah. two of you aren't gonna remember. No, well, that's for sure. I know I can do it though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes me wonder, Steve. I you, do too yeah. now. You have a house yeah. with a furnace. Yes. <laughs> no. Oh, we changed that. Oh, okay. We changed because that's my house. What size? I'm still getting used to this. He's only got one no furnace, fucking idea. right? So it doesn't matter what size. Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, you would have had there. to buy filters for that furnace and would have had to know the size because there are many sizes. No, no, we, they were already there. No, 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 no. For his house. Oh, for your house, yeah. yeah. No, so Did you just luck into the size? I'm pretty sure I just got lucky. Oh, man. <laughs> Again, what that's is my a, life? I was amazing. just like, air filters, please. <laughs> and then they showed up to my house and they were the right ones. <laughs> And I just put them in. <laughs> Good. It's beautiful. That's so be that's so you, my friend. I, so you. I type in internet air filters dot please. And it shows up to my house. And it put was in the right address. address. <laughs> oh, I type in my home. <laughs> say, I'm Steve Dangle. I'm Steve. Yeah. Not Oshawa Steve anymore. No, Thank you. No, sorry, sorry. Oh, I forgot to update it. Ajax Steve. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> I love it. Does, I love your, it. does your thermostat tell you that your filter needs to change? Have you seen those ones? Uh, oh, like is Nest, that a Nest the one? The Nest ones do it. Oh, like, have I, haven't, I haven't set that up with my Nest. I should do that. Yeah, you should do that. One of my I've favorite purchases is is my Nest. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it so much. I love it because I've got the I've got the the front door camera. Ooh. So I can hear I can hear people talking. You have the Google by. one? Yeah. The Google for, I didn't say, is it better than the ring? Way better. Oh yeah. I had the ring one. I, here's why I, Shaq's gonna kick your ass. The ring one was uh, was fine. It was just that mine wasn't like powered into my front door, so you oh. had to replace the battery, which sucked. Oh, um, no, no, but no. but I I also found ring really difficult to like connect into the rest of whatever I had going on at home. So I actually find that I find that the the, the Google Nest is really really good. So you're a uh, I'm a Google Home over Amazon Echo. I have an Amazon, and it's funny. I have all the Amazon stuff. But I've never, yeah, I know it's weird, but it works really well. And uh, I'm, I'm into like home automation stuff. If I've ever, any have ever have like extra cash, I'm like, I want a robot. Why do I have to do this? Let the robot do it. Right. Yeah. Right? Man. Yeah. See? AI. I'm for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pro AI. <laughs> Set your computer to steal. Steal your freedom. Mm, mm. And artwork and everything. Yeah, exactly. All right. And also so write um, really bad. Uh, Summaries of Saber. JJ Paterka also scored. Anyway, hey, let's uh, let's wrap it up. So we will be back Monday. Steve will have an LFR Sunday morning, assuming he can edit it. No, no, I'm gonna. Well, it'll technically be Sunday morning. I'm gonna I'm gonna burn the midnight oil. <laughs> I'm gonna stay up. I'm gonna I'm gonna rough it like I used to. Yeah, the quality might be significantly worse. Yeah, it's gonna worse. fucking stink. <laughs> it's gonna be such a drop off from game no, one to two. No, it'll be very good. There'll be a lot of shots like this. I've, no, hey. Oh, no. I better not leave any of those in. I'm going to give you the best iMovie has to offer. You watch. That's right. And he'll change your filter, too. We'll see you Monday. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete. Wow.